Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. For this one I'm going to be talking over a VOD from my stream. Um, just to discuss the, the my TVT opener and basic strategy. And it's very different than probably anything you've seen in TVT if you're not if you're new to my YouTube channel. Um, it's not going to be like an, uh, a barracks first reaper or a gas first into some sort of starport play. It's going to sound insane, but we're actually going to take our third base before our natural. We're going to get a full turret ring. We're going to planetary at our natural and our third. I know it sounds ridiculous. And we're going to tech straight into Mass Raven. And it might sound insane, but um, I do use it at the Mass League level without having too good of mechanics. And this is a, a GM player from EU that we're playing at the moment. So we can see how this works out. So the SCV that builds our depot is going to be the one I send out to scout. I like to get there early, specifically before there's a possibility of a quick wall off. Um, although in a four player map, that's still a possibility. Because it's very important to know when your opponent took his gas. If you see when he takes his gas, you can tell if he's opening Reaper. You can tell if he went gas before barracks. And then he lets you know like how early you need that turret ring against possible starport play. So this is going to be a one rax expand with on no gas. And depending on what we scout, we may actually even get three command centers before taking our gas. So now we're getting the scouting now. It looks like it's going to be a gas first build. Just checking the gas. You can see, yep, around 40 to 60 gas is gone. So that's definitely a gas first opener. SCV count looked correct, so it's not an 8 8 So against the gas first opener, um, we have to get the turret ring before our third command center. But had that been a barracks first opener, we'd actually follow this up by taking our third base, then a bunker at the front of our natural, and then take our natural base, and then go double gas engineering bay, and then get a turret ring to cover everything. And that would actually get turrets up in time against um, a drop or a starport play. But against a gas first build, the drop and starport play can come a lot quicker around like seven minutes and possibly even earlier. So we cannot afford to get the third command center in here. So the plan is command center to take our third. And the reason we take our third before our natural is because we don't have much of an anomaly early on and it's easy to take our natural later on where it's difficult to take a third, especially if he's got map presence and uh, maybe a little bit of a containment on us. Uh, just a bunker after our first gas geyser. It does mean we don't need to take two gas. We can just take one gas earlier. So that helps a little bit. So it's going to be gas, bunker, and then engineering bay. Uh, gas first into Reaper is a thing, so you still want to have your Marines set up in positions to deal with Reapers. Until I have my fourth marine, I like to keep um, all my marines in the most likely jump up position. I think at this point I give up on the idea of there being any reapers and just fill a bunker. So we need two turrets at our third for this ring, so we're actually going to transport two of them over there. Just in case he's got something sitting outside my main base, I don't want him to see this third ahead of time. Not that he could kill the third at this point in the game, it would still turn into a planetary in time, but he could kill the SCVs, which means the missile turrets won't get up like at this point in the game, which means you know a fast banshee could all of a sudden become a huge harassment threat. And this is going to be the completion of our turret ring. Now we're completely safe from Banshees getting in. And these turrets help a lot versus drops. Oftentimes it's shooing away the drop, the medevac, but even if he commits to it, um, it's very unlikely that he'll get much success. He'll probably lose most of the uh, most of what's contained in the drop before he gets it out, and then you can just deal with it with an SCV pole and. Um, Marines. Now we did see the Banshee. There's a bunch of possibilities from Gas First. 
Um, Banshee is probably the easiest. Drop is probably the next easiest. Uh, if you don't see anything by like 7.30, it might be that Raven first opener and the double medevac drop. If that's the case, take all your Marines and put them in the most likely drop position. In this case, it would be the bottom right of my main base in anticipation of that. And then the last one, which is the least likely but also the most difficult to deal with, is a one base all in off of gas first, um, which would be heavy in the tank count. And if he did that and attacked straight into my natural and pushed quickly before I could get a PF at my natural or any defense at the top of my ramp in my main, I would probably be dead. Um, if he attacks your third, you're fine. You can just stall with the planetary. And you spend a lot of money repairing, but that's okay because you're up three bases to one. Uh, once the turret ring is complete, we take the third command center at our natural. We get our factory, we get high sec auto tracking, which is turret, turret range, and more importantly, planetary fortress range, which is actually important versus siege tanks. You wouldn't think so, but it is. Um, and getting all six gas geysers as we can afford it. The reason it's so important to get uh, range on your planetaries against siege tanks is so that it's difficult for siege tanks to shoot SCVs repairing on the far side of the planetary. Because the planetary is, um, you know, five hexes wide and the range of it you can shoot is seven with the upgrade. So including the tank and the SCV itself, that means the siege tanks kind of have to shoot 14 range to get at your SCVs on the far side. Now that is possible because, you know, the math isn't perfect and things are rounded, so they can get that position, but they also have to have vision, and so it's not too likely of a threat. Uh, just building the starports at the bottom of my base. Uh, from the factory, we're teching straight to three starports and getting Corvid Reactor immediately, which is the energy upgrade for Ravens. Once a Corvid Reactor is 50 seconds complete, we can uh, we can start our raven production, and the ravens will spawn with an extra 50 energy. So it looks like his attack is about to begin. He is approaching. He sees my third base on the mini map, so he knows that exists now. I sent out two SCVs to build proxy command centers. As I start my raven production, this is when my mineral. Minerals are going to start banking up, and I want to turn those minerals into widow mines as well, but mostly just into tons and tons of command centers. I want to be expanding everywhere at all times. So we're just repairing against these siege tanks. It's good to be economical against repairing against siege tanks, because the tanks will always arrive before you have ravens. So against two tanks, you want four SCVs repairing. Against one tank, you want two SCVs repairing. Against three tanks, you want five. You don't want to like see a siege tank and like send eight SCVs on repair because every mineral counts. Even though we're going mass raven at this point in the game, like up until the point you're making ravens, you're strapped on minerals, not on gas. You're actually banking gas in anticipation of the ravens. Because there is only one orbital for mules in this build. <clears throat> Those auto turrets are kind of annoying. It's going to put me down to five gas intake. Which is not ideal, but it's not terrible either. Once if he bump knock, knocks it down to four gas guys, that's when it starts to really sting. So it's gonna try to avoid those Vikings, pick off the second siege tank. Looks like he's unsieged. Uh, you have to worry about this little thing if he tries to ferry up your ramp. Our ferry up into your main base. We have a bunker at the top of the ramp and a wall off. And that's enough. Even if he goes with like a lot of bio to try to bum rush that ramp, um, he gets stuck on the ramp for a while as he's digging his way through, which leaves him very vulnerable to Seeker Missile. So I think that's the end of this push. Uh, he didn't commit much to it, so I'm sure he's going pretty heavy macro behind this. Uh, Using one auto turret to kill two while repairing with SCVs, I think that's totally worth it to sacrifice some mineral income for to save 50 energy on ravens. Because energy on your ravens is basically your army. If your ravens are dry, your army does not exist. <laughs> like, 
more than your army supply count. It's your Raven energy count that really matters. All right, so getting that widow mine production going. So with widow mines, I like to spread them all over the map, almost like creep spread. Put them like one scan apart from each other, and it gives you really good map vision. And typically, the worst case scenario is they launch, they kill a marine, and then your opponent scans and kills a widow mine. So you get a marine and one less mule from your opponent for every widow mine. Plus, you get lots of map vision. <coughs> Now, it takes two Seekers to kill a Siege Tank, but if two Siege Tanks are next to each other, it only takes three Seekers. You put two on one, one on the other. And if three Siege Tanks are set up in the shape of like a triangle, for instance, you can kill all three of them by putting one Seeker on each. And it's very important to know this, because being efficient with your Raven Energy, once again, as we covered it, your Raven Energy is your army, so... Um, I've seen Flash through his games because his Ravens ran out of energy and he was over secreting siege tanks. So it's important not to do that. So those, there's, that's an example there of two siege tanks that can guide, die to just three seeker missiles. Uh, I do seeker widow mines. It seems like a waste, but if you just use an auto turret, he has time to pick up and run away, like lots of time to pick up and run away. And one seeker is cheaper than two auto turrets, so... The other nice thing about Seeker Missile is um, there's no attack warning for it until it hits. So if you cast Seekers on, say, like an SCV line, he doesn't hear any attack warning until it's already committed and blown up the SCV line. Uh, here I do see Thors. Thors can be a big issue. So I'm going to add a lot of barracks. Um, my answer to Thor is to start Marauder production. And the nice thing is, even if he's 3-3 three, three mech, which this guy isn't because he's going a lot of bio and stim, but even if he were 3-3 three, three mech, the Thor versus Marauder relationship, upgrades are almost irrelevant since they both do very high damage per shot. It means the armor and attack upgrades have very negligible effect. Um, you want to have structure armor done before bio has his 2-2 two, two upgrades. The combination of 2-2 two, two on marines... And the addition of Marauders make Planetaries very vulnerable to just getting crushed by Bio without having 5 armor. But with the Structure Armor upgrade, the 5 armor makes the Marines do about half the damage they normally would, uh, which helps a lot. It can still get stimmed down, especially if the Marauder counts high. But that's why we build like 5 command centers at a time, <laughs> or at least attempts to. So keeping that harassment force on the right, well, we have our backup ravens on the left. That way I can hit from two different angles, or I can defend with one set and attack with the other. Again, trying to put as much time as I can into getting gas geysers going at new bases, because that is the uh, going to be the bottleneck for the ravens. Auto turrets are really bad at killing planetaries, but planetaries are also really bad at killing auto turrets. So if you find a PF that doesn't isn't able to be repaired, you should be able to get it down. If there are SCVs to repair, you got to be able to kill the SCVs, otherwise you'll never take it down. My SCV count is actually not as high as it typically is. I like to usually get it around to 90, which I think classically sounds like too much but um ravens are only two supply you don't have to worry about saving a ton of army supply for ravens i mean realistically 40 ravens is more than enough and then maybe 20 supply of um widow mines leaves you with 100 supply worth of scvs available if wanted So his army's across the field, so I want to do counterattack harassment here. It's just kind of queuing up some auto turrets. Uh, 
I feel like he'll be busy, so I can probably kill off the repairing SCVs there. Again, the Widow Mine's forcing out scans, which is nice. Um, continuing to try to expand. Realizing my mineral income is actually really low, I think, at some point. I was trying to make Marauders and wasn't even able to afford them. Uh, the Planetaries do go down. It's nice to leave space at, near the ramp of your main, and just all your new command centers you're making, make them there, so in a spot like this, you can actually uh, turn them into emergency planetaries to protect your production. Because it can get really chaotic, especially when it gets all base trady like this. But my planetaries and marauders did kill off all of his bio, so he just has a handful of Thors left over there. And it looks like what's left of that is dying. He might have pulled some of the Thors home, actually. Again, I'm used to having a huge mineral flow to this point in the game. But I think we didn't get the SCV count large enough. Uh, PDD works against Marauder and Thors. As long as the Thor is in high impact mode. But I don't think Thors should be in high impact mode. Yes, you're guaranteed to get damage through the PDD, but Thors do so much damage to Ravens when they're in their regular mode. Because Ravens are light units, they are not armored, so things like Phoenix and Thors and even Ghost auto shots do a ton of damage. <coughs> Ghosts actually aren't too difficult with this. Um... Usually the only time ghosts can punish you is if they catch your ravens like just out in the middle of the field doing nothing. But in that case, if you're caught by stim bio, you lose all your ghosts. Getting caught by or lose all your ravens. If you're caught by ghosts, you usually just lose all your energy. And if you have your ravens defensive, like behind planetaries, you know you can cast your seekers and get and move back before any EMP will hit. So at this point, we got him pretty crippled on his three bases. Looks like he's about to be two bases. Uh, actually, his main base, so I don't even think he can call out a base anymore. He's pushing out, but the Raven Cloud's quite large. Um, we have a Planetary at our natural at this point, too. Marauder production's still going. He's walking through Widow Mines to get to our main. And that is the strategy. So it's all about getting up three bases really quickly so you can get to six gas geysers fast. We hide behind the um, the planetaries for a while, repairing siege tank damage until we have our ravens out. We use our ravens to slowly deal with the siege tank count. You know, the siege tanks will be popping out at more or less the same rate, but your ability to cast seeker missiles will... Um, will keep increasing its, in its rate as you add more and more ravens, and your existing ravens regenerate their energy. And then once you get hit the tipping point of where he has to go back or we kill all of his siege tanks, that's when our ravens can go full offense. Um, be smart where you rally your ravens to. Like if you're attacking on the right side of the map, you may want to rally your ravens to the leftmost points of your bases because that's like the furthest away from where your existing raven cloud is. Just kind of anticipate like where he'd be attacking. Plus, you'll have hopefully a lot of map vision with uh, Widow Mines you're putting out on the map. Which is a good way to spend through the minerals. If you're hitting like a supply max situation, you might want to switch from Widow Mines to Hellions. I find that Hellions are kind of like zero supply because you build them and then you immediately throw them away and send in one of the mineral lines. Even if he has a planetary, you can like hold position them behind the minerals, and it, that's something he has to go and deal with, which is super annoying for him. Uh, whereas Widow Mines is something you put on the field, and it always takes up supply, at least until they're killed. But if you're reaching a supply max situation, you, there's a good chance you've already won the game. So with that, we'll call it the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, the build is Command Center at your third followed by a turret ring, followed by a command center at your natural, and that is if you're up against gas first. If you're up against barracks first, you actually get all three command centers, then double gas, engineering bay, and turret ring. Um, you can check my YouTube channel. I do this build all the time. So just find any TVT 
and find the scenario that you're facing and it's uh, lots of examples there. So with that, I'm going to call it the end of the video. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Check the description for a thumbs up link and I'm out of here. Goodbye.